Funding for Along Water Street at the Akron Art Museum has been provided exclusively by Summa Foundation. One's life does not begin with oneself. I stand on their shoulders, their stories, their gifts, and they allow me to continue the work. The work of any artist is a reflection of that artist's life, their thoughts, talents, inspiration, and history. Art is as varied and unique as the artist who creates it, whether through drawings, sculptures, paintings, or even books. Columbus-based artist Amina Brenda Lynn Robinson's talent is as unique as the work she creates, and her art is a continuous thread, reflecting the continuity of life and her dedication to telling the stories of her ancestors through her art. So I go back to the ancestral waters, deep, very deep, into the thousands of years where they came, came out of and where our communities have come out of. Amina's work in reflecting the story and particular history of one place and time also has a lot of very basic human emotions reflected and human characteristics. And so you see human behavior and often it applies to you as well as to the people whose story is being told. When an artist is sharing a history or a heritage, um, it is deeper and it's personal. So when you share it visually, you're sharing it through your eyes and your perspective. And it goes deeper and it puts meaning and expressiveness into the piece. I liked not only that she had a story to tell, but that she celebrated the stories that she told. Um, it went beyond just, here's what happened. Um, she sucked in her audience into, into the work with the words, with the images. Well, it doesn't come out of me. It comes through me, from a community, from a family, and from my immediate family who shaped my memory. And I just continued the work. Amina's way of telling their stories and creating her art stays true to the African philosophy of Sankofa. Sankofa is a philosophy that um, relates to African art and African American art, and it's the idea of um, bringing th forward the past and learning from the past and incorporating that into what you make or what you do as a way of in influencing and improving the future. Sankofa is like fetching the sticks, the mud, the history, the life of the past bringing it to the present, but it must go forward. It must reach the future. She's strung on Sankofa, which is the African um, symbol for taking from the past and going into the future. I have a, one of my eighth grade students who are doing a piece based on Amina Robinson right now, too, kind of in preparation for their trip next month to the art museum. and. One of my students came here from the Afrocentric school, and he was able to share with the whole class the story of Sankofa and the Sankofa bird, which I was not familiar with that story, but here was somebody who is a really shy student, and, and he shared the story of the bird carrying the egg, looking backwards as it moves forward. And the, I think it's important for our students to do that, to look back, to know where they've come from in order to move forward. And that's the, the basis of her story, the basis of her art. Amina's art embodies the philosophy of Sankofa, especially so with a process that she calls Raganon. Her Akron art exhibition, Along Water Street, includes 12 rag paintings and a 60-foot-long Raganon. If you spelt it out, rag, gun, Nine. 
which means the rags go on and on. That is a ragonon. Well, I already know inside exactly the way it should be, this ragonon. And remember, there they are 20 and 30 years in the making. Uh, they, it just doesn't happen. There are many elements to a ragonon. And a ragonon isn't all fabric. It doesn't have to be. Well, uh, Mina talks about a ragonon as something that rags on and on. And she says it doesn't have to be just a sewn, embroidered, uh, sculptured work, such as the one that you'll see in the exhibition, but can also be anything, a story, a tale, something where you just go on and on and uh, you let it take you. And she's been working on some of these ragonons for decades and doesn't really consider them finished until she dies. I do not rush ragonons. The ragonons are all different and they are the soul of, the, of a community. They are the gifts from other people. I'm simply a, a worker. People are just now, well, what, where, where, when did, 72, 68? I said, I've been doing this. So they're beginning to understand the life of an artist and the commitment to those memories those stories that were passed down to me at a very early age. Not only is it's not just about continuity, but it's also about giving out. It must be shared with the community. A rag drawing is using different fabrics to enhance the paint, the color, whether it's a homemade dye or simply um, house paint, if you're fortunate, acrylic, whatever, whatever you have. Her rag paintings involve a kind of collage using fabric and pasting it on, but also her incredible skill with a brush and delineating people's visages and giving you faces that seem so characteristic and so individual. And, uh, and wonderful scenes, and they're uh, all glued and painted on paper. And she's always been very involved in using very different media or coming up with her own media. Her father, when she was growing up, insisted that every day the children listen to a little music, they read a little literature, and they make a little art. And he taught them many of the old-fashioned ways to make things like rabbit skin glue and different colored pigments. And, and so she mixes those with commercial, commercially made art supplies. As with any artist, Amina's process is uniquely her own, from the materials that she uses to create her art to the skill that she learned from her father. The power of memory, the skills from my father at a very early age, I know where everything is. And I mean, it's, I, I, know, I just know. I don't know why other than my father. Every place and everything that we do has a special meaning to each one of us, again, in a different way, with a different perspective. And that's what words sometimes limit us with. Whereas a picture and color and, and pieces of fabric that might be meaningful or a jar of buttons that you put in a piece are going to create the meaning in a deeper way. When, when you're sharing your story. The Ragonon in Akron at the art museum that I saw has masses and masses Thousands. of Thousands. Oh. But it's through the years. It, it, I don't rush it. It's through the years. Those buttons are placed a certain way. If you notice, over here, these buttons, they are placed a certain way and no one can do it but the artist if someone else reaches within the soul of that work and it's not right it, it's not right the story 
-hmm. So it's that artist who must do the work. Anina is really an incredible person and an incredible character. She is so devoted to her work. She works all the time. Her whole being is focused on her art and on communicating and using art to pass along um, the stories that she has been entrusted with by others. There were times when people didn't understand. Sometimes they would laugh at the work, but it, I didn't care, truly. I don't look at time, but I know my dogs and I are up at four. We just walk up <laughs> and begin to work until maybe 12, 1, 2. And up at four. It's been like that all my life. Well, I love music, it's from the soul, and I've always loved the old spirituals, even though I was brought up Catholic. Um, I love the old spirituals. I hear music all the time because the stories that were passed down to me are musical. That's another layer of those stories. It is the way they are being told and are told that you encounter a whole composition. <laughs> Amazing Grace is a favorite. I love Jesus Loves Me and just, oh, what a beautiful day. <laughs> Along Water Street is all about legacy, and it tells the stories passed on to Amina by her ancestors. Like my uncle, my Uncle Alvin. That's why I know about Water Street. Water Street is presently Marconi Boulevard in the downtown area. African Americans live all downtown on Water Street. This was before my time. In 1938, they changed the name. But no, and the, the history was lost. So there's a great deal of research that goes into the work. So a combination of folklore, family stories, and research all form the basis for the Along the Water Street Ragganon. And it starts... In the beginning, my, my feel, in the beginning, a community never begins by itself. You see, it is about community and the families that make up these, this, all communities. And that goes back thousands and thousands of years ago. So in the beginning, there is a map, there is a, a, a white um, piece, and you have all of this embroidery work. That's a map of the life, if it's studied, of this community. And then I go on into the different layers of the community. For an example, Water Street. My great, great uncle had a bait shop on Water Street. He told these stories to his nephew. I think one of the things it tells you is, of course, the history of that area of Columbus and this era, and really of Ohio and its settlement. The history, uh, going back to the beginning, and there's a one that's called In the Beginning that shows you the earth and the floodwaters separating. But also, you should look for a bit of yourself, because Amina's work in reflecting the story and particular history of one place in time 
also has a lot of very basic human emotions reflected and human characteristics. And so you see human behavior and often it applies to you as well as to the people whose story is being told. The Akron Art Museum wanted the work, so I think that's extraordinary. Our ties go way back. They were very kind to my son. And I think in kindnesses shown to others, that's what is left in this world. I first ran into Amina's work in a small art gallery in New York City um, in the early mid-80s, and um, I think that it was the character of it. It had such a strong personal character. It was so wonderfully crafted, and yet it really explored the freedom of self-taught artists and of um, outside art and folk art, but it combined that with obviously what was a very trained and skilled hand. And you were able to bring her artwork here to the Akron Art Museum when? I was thrilled to find out she was an Ohio artist, and we did her first uh, museum show, was here at the Akron Art Museum in 1986. It was her first solo museum show. Serendipity, creativity, and inspiration. Those are the links among the Akron Art Museum, Amina Brendalyn Robinson, and the Miller South School for the Visual and Performing Arts. Last year, art teachers Julie Hogarth and Susan Yingling used Amina's work to inspire their students to create Ragonons. Those same students made several visits to the museum on field trips. Also last year, Amina's exhibition was scheduled into the art museum. So when the museum staff learned about the Miller South students creating the Ragonons, they invited the students to display their artwork in collaboration with Amina's exhibition. It's a collaboration that has thrilled everyone involved. The Miller South students um, were wonderfully taught by the teachers uh, Amina's process of making studies and then incorporating them into a larger work. So they copied the form of the Ragonon, this long, um, miles long, it sometimes seems, embroidered, sewn, drawn piece, but also a very carefully incorporating history and fact, as well as feeling and reaction and response to a place. And so um, of the Ragonons, one of them, which is about a visit to the Akron Art Museum, of course, is dear to my heart. And um, it really shows the children's response to the artwork. And that's something that Amina gives you, is both the history in terms of facts, but also a very personal, emotional take on it. Even the children, the wonderful children at Miller South School for the Arts, the students, the fourth graders, the eighth graders. The work is wonderful. They're already artists. All they need to do is to continue. I think the stories that Amina creates with her art is what her art is about. She makes you want to go there. She wants you, you want to step into that street and experience um, what she experienced growing up and the stories she tells um, are just beautiful. They, they, they are places you want to go, and they're places that you find yourself wanting to tell your own story about a special place to you when you see her art. Yes, I was trying to tell the story of, well, we all were trying to tell the story of how we went to the art museum, and we were telling the story of how we were making the book and it was just so exciting. We went to the art museum and we each got a chance to sketch out a picture and we chose which one we wanted to do. And I did, um, when you walk in, the big triangle bright colored picture when you, in the front entrance of the museum. The Saul Lewick? Yeah, that one. I did a piece, I'm pretty sure it was unnamed, but it was wooden and copper and it was yar it was like yarn of copper so I made like a girl knitting by it because that reminded me of all the copper wire like wrapped up into little yarn balls and then I used a lot of stuff like yarn to sew through it to make the yarn look real and yeah. part of the reason that I had my class do the journey through African-American artists was 
the class itself, the makeup of the class, had not quite gelled as a community. And it forced them to do a collaborative piece where they all had to work together on it. Well, I used, the, I used color. It wasn't, I didn't use like buttons to pop out. Like, but we did sew and everything. Like, it was really hard. We had to help each other sew and everything. Um, for the Ragnarok, I made, I just did a piece of the upstairs room with um, six different people just looking at the art and like expressing what they thought about their, the art with like their bodies, like people turning their heads and like scared looking and stuff. It's cool because like you don't have to write a story to tell one. Reconstructing history in art, originally it was all we had to tell about our history before photography came about. So that's what we had to work with, um, what an artist told. And sometimes it was maybe skewed, um, maybe ex very expressive, so sometimes misinterpreted. Um, but it's more than a photograph can tell sometimes. I think we have the expressive component. Like I said, her work is all about the color and the lines and the expressiveness and the stories she has to share. It's usually art is more interesting when it tells stories, and her stories were about her childhood. So instead of like writing a journal and a diary, she made art. One story she did, this is my favorite one, um, is A Street Called Home. It's a, about kind of like her childhood in Columbus, all busy, straight, very colorful, very vibrant. Her colors are so bright that they, she like, sees fluorescent paint, I'm guessing. Um, she just is really good, I guess I could say. It's like, she amazes me. It makes me feel really good because like her lines are like very wavy and she like outlines them to make them stick out and her colors are just amazing. They make me feel like kind of dizzy because they're like like too colorful. Like well they're not too colorful but they're colorful. Very colorful. Yeah. Well, her work it's it makes me feel very happy because there's like I said there's nothing very dull. It makes me feel like every day is like a party because in her work there's bright colors and people everywhere and the streets are really crowded and feels like there's a great big event going on. Her colors were amazing. They were bright and just magnificent. Does her work make you feel happy? Yes. It's all about the intensity of color and the action and the expressiveness that she uses or that, that she um, creates with her color and, and the flowing lines and the movement in it. Yes, because in spite of many things that were unpleasant, there has to be a healing, and it becomes a, a part of that healing process, a joy, and hopefully a way of life that they will continue on their journey. That's very important. It's not just today. It's every day. I think that it's really important that children be exposed to art, first of all, and the joy of having the opportunity to make art and to see how disciplined it is and what thought processes go into it um, is really important. People sometimes think that art is about um, what you feel and that there are no rules and no technique and that that's not really true so it gives them a great appreciation of that uh, and of what's involved and it also gets them to explore subject matter I think that her art in particular talks to you about not just technique but content and the importance of realizing that everybody has a story and that there is our stories all around us and that art can be made not just out of famous fancy subjects or famous people but also out of your life and your neighborhood and what you see around you. I learned that if you don't want to like always be like everyone else you should try something else like you should make maybe people stand out like mess with their hair and what they're wearing make it really silly so it's just not normal. I like the work of Amina Robinson because it's very creative and it's like all crowded and there's a lot of details at every spot you look and she makes big hands so it makes it kind of cool like you could see the details on it.
I had fabulous art professors that said, you're not, you're not teaching children to become artists, you're teaching children to become people. And her work is so, such a good example of that where it's not just about art, but it's about the people who she's portraying in the art. Well, I've always enjoyed um, like the Mona Lisa, and I always thought that was how cool and how the, the artist is from a long time ago. Um, it would be really cool to meet Leonardo da Vinci, and it would be especially cool to meet Amina Robinson. And so um, it would, it's really cool that there's actually a chance of you meeting them. If I can meet her, I think it would be really cool because she was such an inspiration, and the way she worked as an artist really inspired me on this piece. Art should be shared especially children's art should be shared and art education needs to be promoted and, and um, out in the community because they they give it to us we need to give it back to them to let my family see all my art and everything that is hanging up um, it's gonna be real fun my, my dad I know I can see the smile on his face right now when he see it um, he gonna be fit, he, he, he already see he already seen mine but he want to see everybody else's too and my mom, she's just going to really light up when she sees it. And my grandma, my sister, yeah. It's going to feel really cool. And I don't know, it's going to feel like people that I don't know are going to be looking at my stuff. And How does that make you feel? It makes me feel cool. It makes me feel like I'm on TV. <laughs> I'm going to be famous. I just, I just can't believe it. My hope is that they will continue on their journeys. They all have different journeys and they're already on it. They will continue to bring out the soul, not only of their families, but of a community, catching laws, communities, and making it a part of whatever they do in order to enhance the future. Funding for Along Water Street at the Akron Art Museum has been provided exclusively by Summa Foundation.